Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, my name is LJ, and you're watching No Clutch Garage. And right now, we're at Euro Empire, and we're about to start working on my car. Big thing for today is that we're actually going to be replacing the oil pan on my car, and there's a couple reasons for that. One, it makes it way easier for me to change like the filter in the future if I need to do any more services to the transmission. And the reason for that is because this pan is cast aluminum and the filter comes separate from the actual pan. If you ever look at a BMW OEM fluid pan for the ZF8, the pan has the filter integrated into the actual pan itself. So anytime that you have to replace the filter, you have to replace the pan itself. Now, a couple years ago, this was a big issue because those pans used to go for around $500. Right now, the pan alone will go for about $125 to $150, depending on where you get it. So they've came down on price a lot. But still, there isn't anything like having a cast aluminum pan. It's heavy duty. It's also going to be able to cool faster. And this one is a little bit deeper, so you can hold more fluid in the transmission. And we're also going to be talking a little bit about the fluid that I'm using because it's a very highly recommended fluid that I recently found out about and it should make a difference when it comes to these transmissions. Now it's not a miracle worker by any chance but it should help the clutches hold and grip a little bit better. So let's go ahead and look at all this stuff. Alright guys so here I have the pan. So here's the pan I already opened it and there's not really gonna be an unboxing for this. Oh, we got some stickers, we got some product information and it tells you how to torque it down it also gives you some instructions as to how to install it so this is what the pan looks like and i haven't actually taken this out so i don't even know what it actually looks like there seems to be more stuff here and if you can see it says this for jeep grand cherokee hap 70 hap 75 this works with the bmw stuff they don't have it listed on the website as a bmw part or compatible but it's uh it's a ZF transmission, so everything on here is going to work exactly the same on the HP50 on my M240i. So here we have the pan, and as you can see, it is bolted down by some Allen, and then you have the filter unit, and then you have the pan itself. It's cast aluminum, and it's finned at the bottom, so that's going to allow for better cooling. And as you can see, it's a little bit deeper. and this is removable that's one of the bigger benefits about this pan the filter is removable and replaceable without having to replace the pan which is what i was talking about earlier of course the aluminum pan and it's a little bit deeper one thing i do want to note is it doesn't come with a gasket so you do have to order the gasket separately or if your transmission is new enough you can just transfer that gasket over today i wasn't aware about the gasket not being here so we're gonna order a new one but it's just we can't find us a standalone bmw part and then there is a mopar part we can use but we couldn't find that either so our only option right now is to put the gasket on texas 2k is in exactly two weeks so we're gonna go ahead with the old gasket and then just fit it on here i do want to talk about this fluid that i'm using though this fluid is called Adrenaline SS and this is a transmission fluid that is compatible with our transmission. It's made by Hot Shot Secret Motorsports. It is a group 5 oil, so it you know is some of the best stuff out here, but we're gonna look at some of the things that make this a better fluid than your regular ZF fluid. So for one, it's gonna help reduce extreme heat. In racing applications, this is really important because as you guys know these transmissions and anything really that you're pushing to its limit is going to be very hot. Uh, same thing happens with motors and that's why fueling is so important. That's why having the right oil is so important. It happens with the motors, it also happens with transmissions. Uh, another thing you can do to help eliminate heat in the transmission is to upgrade your oil cooler for the trans and do some more modifications to keep cool fluid flowing through the transmission. It also promotes non-slip shifts and increases response time and this is due to without getting too technical the chemicals that are in this fluid that are basically going to help with slip i have heard from reports with this fluid that it actually helps like for us the bad gear or the bad clutches or the clutches that hold third and sixth gear and i've heard reports of this actually helping with that not eliminating it but just helping and you know that's a big plus it also improves horsepower up to three percent and that's due to the viscosity of the fluid and then it also protects against wear so this is just a really good fluid overall if you're into motorsports and racing and the cf fluid is really good but let's face it it's made for 
conventional use. It's not made for racing. So at some point you have to upgrade your fluids, and that includes you know any fluid that you use, whether it's diff, pants, uh, transfer case, motor, oil. You're gonna have to upgrade those fluids at some point. Now I heard about this fluid through uh, Sutton Tuning, and he's a big transmission tuner. Uh, especially if you're an N54 car, you probably heard of him. Uh, he does a lot of tuning for the HP6s. And he recommended this fluid on one of the lives that we do, Whiskey Wednesday. And so I decided I was going to try it out. Uh, I've heard really good reports of it, and I've heard really good results. So let's go ahead and try it. All right, so one of the first things we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and take off that belly pan that is in In order to do that, you're gonna need an eight millimeter socket to remove those little bolts or those little screws. Take that thing off first. For this part, you're gonna need a eight millimeter socket for this, and you're gonna need one 10 millimeter for this one right here at the end. Alright, so the first thing we need to do now is we're going to need to take this plug off. In order to take it off, in order to take this plug off, you're going to need a 10 millimeter Allen. And you're going to take it off. And I recommend you don't use a power tool for this simply because when the fluid does come out, it's going to get everywhere. So you don't want that all over your power tools. I'm just going to use a ratchet and take it off that way. Alright guys, so when we get down here, first thing we want to do is we want to remove this little shield right here because it's actually going to prevent us from taking these bolts out that are right alongside. Also, I tried to open this, but it's stripped. So, I can't open this now, but we're going to improvise. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these bolts and I'm going to lean it down and have all the fluid go down there. And to take these off guys, it's only going to be two of them. It's this one and this one right here. And to take those off, you're going to need an E10. So here I have an E10 with a swivel. Um, you can also use a ratchet that would work just fine. But take, taking these off essentially is going to allow you to take this heat shield off. And you could just bend it back, but I want to make it neat. So I'm going to go ahead and take them off. And then I'll have all of these bolts available. I am free and able to take all these bolts off. Now, since my plug stripped, I can't do anything about it. Uh, I could just drill a hole in there and since the pan's coming off, it's not gonna affect anything because all the residue or anything like that would stay on the pan. However, I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of these bolts off and then I'm gonna leave these two back here seated and this one in the front seated as well. And I'm gonna slowly start dropping this as I position this underneath my car in order to, you know, have a clean drip and not make a mess. But you guys just watch. All right, so right now I'm gonna let it drain for a minute and then I'm gonna take the whole pan off. Hey guys, I just have one question. Which one came first? Chicken or the egg? Definitely the egg. The egg? The egg. Who, who liked the egg? The dinosaur. The, a dinosaur had a Nick, fucked up baby. Can what? What? You can't, you can't hit it with a dinosaur. What the f Yo, my transmission's like, yo, you should just replace me, bro. <laughs> Why do you keep on adding more power? Oh, oh yes, I know that was torch, baby. Today on how the fuck is my transmission? How fuck is it? He just has gear sitting there. 
Yeah, yeah no, that's pretty normal. Yeah. Make sure you put performance sand up in there. Performance what? Sand. sand. Performance sand. <laughs> little speed, little speed, little speed fan. Little speed fan. I'm over here actually listening to you. <laughs> Pebbles? Some Here's pebbles? Some if they come from you, they're fruity pebbles, but... Yeah. <laughs> Where <are> you go? <laughs> Always. Alright guys, so this is what the transmission looks like without the pan. You got the valve body right there. The pan's over here. Let's take a look at this a little bit closer. Alright guys, so if you guys are looking at this pan, this is the OEM pan. As you can tell, we have a filter right there. And you can see that this pan is not nearly as deep as the new pan going on. You see that? How much deeper that is? compared to this right here. So the pan does have some uh, magnetic elements. So we have here magnet and this is all like metal. It's like a metal paste that happens over time. Uh, this is perfectly normal. You're gonna see this on a transmission, whether it's daily driven or it's raced. There's some little shards of metal, which is also kind of normal, but you know, it's an indication that you need to do a service. And then here's a new pan. The other thing that we have to do is we're gonna have to take this gasket and place it over on the new pan and you know usually i wouldn't advise to do this but under the circumstances and you know this gasket's still pretty good it's not damaged at all it's not brittle it's not cracking so i think it's perfectly okay to just transfer over at least for now until we can get a new gasket Okay, right, so one more thing that we have to do to this pan before we actually put it in. I want to go ahead and make sure that these are torqued down properly. I'm just give them another small turn. Oh my God, Tighten. Don't mind the guys. They uh, have to talk crap. There are also these things right here which pop out of the OEM pan. These have to be transferred. And then we put these, you see these holes are extra large. That's because these are supposed to go in there. And this is what's going to stop you from pinching the pan. That way the gasket seals properly and it's not being pinched. All right guys, another thing that I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and take some of this fluid and this is going to make the fill up a bit easier. Now granted, we do have machines here that are going to help a lot with that, but I'm going to fill it, I'd say probably to about right here. And another important part is that there is an O-ring right here. We're going to take some of this fluid, just to lubricate it. Good. And now it's ready to go. So, Brendan's going to explain why we don't do full flushes on transmissions. Because as the transmission wears, you have a lot of little particles from the clutch packs and, and gears, right? And what that does is basically the clutches wear together with that being in the fluid. And then when you, when you completely flush the fluid, right, you put brand new fluid in there. And a lot of times that will end up causing the clutches to actually slip. And then that'll destroy a transmission a lot faster. Now, as long as you keep up on the services, a transmission, especially an automatic transmission, will last a really long time. But, you know, not servicing the transmission for a while, right? Like over 100,000 miles and then all of a sudden doing a flush on it, that's that's a real quick way to kill a transmission. Yeah. All right, so now this part, we're just gonna install the pan. I'm gonna hand tighten the screws for the bolts and then we're gonna actually follow the procedure, the correct procedure for installing this. It's not that I have the pan on there, now what I have to actually do is grab a torque wrench and we're gonna torque it down to the specified torque. That's right here, torque it down to 8 to 10 pound feet of torque, so I'm gonna torque it down to 10 pound feet of torque since we're using those bolts. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you the pattern that they want you to follow and I'm gonna leave it on there for a while so you guys can pause it and look at it. Now, of course, those instructions will come with the pan if you decide to get it, but it's uh, useful information anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and talk it down as specified. Alright guys, 
course, now that this has been installed, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually fill it up with fluid. And to do that, we begin by taking off the drain plug. And the drain plug is going to utilize that same 10 millimeter Allen to take it off. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright guys, for this next part, we actually need to understand one thing. So. As you guys heard earlier, it's not a good idea to do a full flush on these transmissions. So what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna start filling up the trans, all right? And this is the procedure that you're gonna have to follow, so pay close attention. I'm gonna start filling up the trans. Once the trans starts dripping a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and plug it. But we're gonna plug it, and then we're gonna bring the car back down. We want the car to be lifted off the ground slightly in order to put it in gear. So we're gonna put it in drive, maybe 10 seconds and then we're gonna put it in reverse another 10 seconds and so on and so forth for about a minute so what that's gonna do is gonna cycle the fluid through and then we're gonna lift the car up while running and we're gonna go ahead and fill it up some more so make sure you guys remember this procedure it is very important or else you will have the wrong amount of fluid in your transmission and that could lead to some serious damages Alright guys, so I have completed the whole service, car still up in the air, the only thing we have left to do is put the belly pants back on, but since I'm doing more work to the car, I'm going to leave the car the way it is. Everything's on there, and everything's sealed properly. We used almost two gallons of the adrenaline, so just keep that in mind, you might need to use all of it. Other than that, that's it, and let me just show you what it looks like right now. It looks pretty good if you ask me. That's pretty much it guys. If you like this video and if you found this informational, please, please, please go ahead and give this video a like. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. There's going to be way more stuff coming for all levels really of modifications. People that are as far as I am or, you know, just beginners. I also have a whole collection of DIYs that I've done in the past when I had OEM Plus cars. So feel free to check those out. I had at the very beginning of my YouTube career made a video about doing the trans service and it was really bad but now we have an updated one and this one with an upgrade pan if you were to do this with just a regular pan you can still follow the same steps as far as draining and refilling your transmission with fluid so anyway guys thank you so much thank you for all the support and I'll catch you guys next video